Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, I received a gaming laptop from one of my good friends, and as you can see, this thing's seen better days. I was told it was dropped, but that wasn't going to cause this kind of damage. This is more of a case of rage quitting in a game, you know, losing a game, probably, uh, you know, punching the screen off of this thing, throwing it on the ground. This is more of a case of a serious rage quit, and this was brought to me by him just to see if I wanted to use any parts off of it because, you know, going into this thing, replacing the keyboard, the shell, the screen, and anything else that needs to be replaced is just going to cost a little more than it's really worth going into. So I figured, since this does have HDMI and USB Type-C video out, we could probably turn this into a makeshift desktop gaming PC, and with the specs here, it'd be totally worth it if we can get this thing to boot back up. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. I've tried to get it to power on, and the power button is totally missing from the top. I guess it was connected to the uh, whole shell itself, but that's long gone. The battery does have a little bit of swelling from being hit so hard, so I unplugged it. I don't want to mess around with the battery. He did include the power supply. It's got a 230 watt power supply, and that's plenty for what we have here. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and remove the shell and see if we can kind of turn this into a desktop gaming PC. First thing I noticed here was the fan over here on this side is kind of locked up. I think it's because maybe the case is squishing down on it. So once I get everything removed, we might be able to get that to free up. If not, I'd have to replace it or come up with some kind of fan that'll work for this cooling system. One of the best things about this is a lot of the screws are already missing because the shell has just been kind of torn apart. So I don't have that many screws I need to take out of this bottom panel. We'll go ahead and get this off. Now, really, the only thing that's missing besides, you know, the screen and half of the shell here is a M.2 SSD. I removed it and gave it back to him because I had his data on. There was no way to recover it the way the laptop is right now. But, you know, taking a look at this main board here, it doesn't look like it's been cracked in half, which is definitely a good sign. So next thing I need to do is just remove the whole board itself from the top of the shell. So I've got that out. Everything's looking pretty good here. And just as I thought, the fan is functional. The keyboard bracket here was kind of pushing down on the fan itself, keeping it from moving. So both of the fans should start spinning up if we can get power to this. And this is one of those newer laptops that has half of the RAM soldered to the board, plus we've got a single DIMM over on the other side. This has 16 gigabytes of RAM, an 11th gen i7 CPU, and an RTX 3060. So it's really no slouch, and if we can get this up and running, we should see some really great performance out of this machine. Now, like I mentioned, the power button was totally missing. It's actually got a separate power button from the keyboard itself, and the ribbon cable is still here. So if we jump two of these pins here, we should be able to power this thing up. So I'm going to get my monitor set up. We'll plug in HDMI and the power supply and see if we can get this thing to come on. All right, let's go ahead and plug the power in. I've got HDMI to my monitor. And there are some LEDs on the board. As soon as I plug the power in, we do get a red LED indicating that the battery's charging, even though the battery's not plugged in. And the power lead, or the power button lead here, looks like it had four pins. So if we jump two of these, either the laptop's going to blow up, or we can get this thing to come on. So I'm just going to jump them all, see what happens here. Ooh, and I did see the fan move just a little bit. But the unit's not on yet. So I'm either jumping the reset, or holding it too long. I don't know. I'm going to try to jump them individually. There it is. So the unit's coming on. We've got both fans spinning. HDMI to the monitor. My monitor is set up to auto detect a signal. So I'll just wait a second here. 
All right, so I've got an idea. I'm not getting any signal right now the way it is, but it's trying to boot up to the BIOS because we don't have a storage drive. I don't think the BIOS will show up over HDMI. Luckily, we do have USB Type-C on this. I've got a USB Type-C monitor here. We'll try it one more time. And if this doesn't work, we'll have to plug in a drive. There it is. So we're getting to the BIOS over USB Type-C. So now that I know we can get this thing powered up, I've installed an M.2 drive. I've also mounted this to a little piece of uh, fake carbon fiber that I had laying around. I used some uh, motherboard standoffs just to keep it up a little bit. And I've got this massive power button soldered right to the leads we used to power this up the first time. So all I need to do is hit the button once. It'll kind of bridge that gap and it should power up. I've got HDMI plugged in because if we're able to get to the operating system, HDMI should automatically take over, hopefully. Okay, so I've tried this a few times now, and I think this is it. We've got a blue light on the monitor. Oh, there we go. So we're now booting into Windows 11 Pro. I just need to go ahead and log in. We can take a look at the specs on this unit. So for the CPU, we've got an i7-11370H, four cores, eight threads. Kind of wish we had a few more threads here. This is going to kind of hold the GPU back. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And we've also got an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060, obviously laptop GPU with six gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It seems to be running decently and I've installed the Armory Crate for these ASUS or these tough laptops. That way I could change the power profile. We're gonna be set to turbo performance. And I'll tell you, even though this thing is out of a laptop shell, it still gets pretty hot. That little CPU definitely pulls some wattage for what we have here. But overall, not a bad little system so far. Let's check out a little bit of gaming. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, medium settings. I figured we'd be getting a little more out of this, but if you take a look at the wattage, I don't think the armory crate is working correctly because we're only at around 25 watts on that CPU. It really can't boost up to where it needs to be with a game like this, so I've got a little bit of tweaking I need to do. But I gotta say, for a free gaming PC, not bad. I'm not gonna complain about this kind of performance, but I'm sure we can get more out of it. Got a little fluctuation between 60 and 59, but that's something you'd never notice if you were playing this. I've just got that frame counter on so I can actually see it do it. But yeah, I mean, with games like these, we shouldn't have any issues running them, especially even with the CPU only running at about 25 to 26 watts, which we should be getting a little more out of it. I think Armory Crate is really holding this thing back. I also went through and ran a few benchmarks. We've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 38,338, Fire Strike 16,081, and finally Time Spy with a 6,650. I've checked out some benchmarks from similarly spec units online. These are right on par with everything else with the same CPU and GPU combo. Moving over to God of War 1080p High. Now, if we take a look at the temps, we're on up there, but I've manually adjusted the CPU TDP up to 45 watts, and we're right there at 42 to 43. I've used Throttle Stop to do this, but there are other applications on the market, so it's totally possible to manually adjust the TDP on the CPU, and of course, it's really gonna help out with performance, but this cooling system really can't handle it because we're up there around 94 degrees Celsius. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal 1080p Ultra Settings, and this is one of those games that just works. I mean, it's a really well-optimized game. We're getting an average over 100 FPS at Ultra Settings, and we could probably go up to Nightmare, even with the way it's set up right now. Checking out Spider-Man Miles Morales, and this kind of shows us that that CPU is holding this RTX 3060 back. I know we're not working with super high-end components here, but if we had a more powerful CPU or at least a better cooling system that could keep those clocks up, we could get a lot more out of this because we're only at around 65 FPS 1080p high. And the final PC game I wanted to test for this video was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We're at 1080p balanced preset. And uh, by the end of this, we had an average of 94 FPS and a low of 50. If you take a look at the performance summary, CPU bottleneck, 99%.
So this is really holding us back, and uh, I need to come up with a way to kind of cool this a bit better. Well, overall, it definitely works. We've got that RTX 3060, which is putting out some pretty decent performance, but we're kind of being held back by that CPU. Now, there are some more modifications that I can do to this, and I will have another video coming up in the next week or so, so keep an eye on the channel. I kind of want to case this thing up, and I can actually add a larger heat sink just to the top of the heat pipes here to try to keep that CPU temp down. That way we can up the TDP and keep those clocks up to get much better performance out of this thing. I've got a bunch of old heat sinks and small fans laying around. I could definitely rig something up to keep the temps down. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments below what you would have done with something like this. I mean, if you got a laptop that, you know, was pretty much smashed up all over the place, would you have tried to convert it, sold the motherboard, or try to repair the whole unit? If you've got any questions, or if there's anything else you want to see running on this in the next video, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.